Welcome back to another installment of the Ore Shop Weekly Gem. We're in the Tinker Shop with guest appearance, Ryan Mitchell. Hello. And Ryan is going to discuss these crazy things. And the proper pronunciation is... Bismuth. Bismuth. Yeah, Bismuth. Okay. This. Uh, what can you tell us? What can I tell you? I love this stuff. Um, it's really, 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 really old. So, for me, it's got this, like, super ancient feeling. Um, like, they'll tell the age of something by determining, like, its primordial isotope's half-life. So, the primor primordial isotope of bismuth, of which it has only one, is bismuth 209. And it has a half-life of approximately one billion times older than the age of the universe. So, it's kind of been around a while. And at this point, you know, we can never get it exact, but the age of the universe is this. So, if we multiply that by 1 billion, then that's how old this stuff is. Holy been there a while. Holy moly. <laughs> and uh, I think the most interesting part about this stuff is that it is one of the very few things on earth that is naturally diamagnetic. Diamagnetic, okay. Yeah, there's well, everybody knows magnetism, magnetism, right? Like, right? Magnets, yeah. So a magnet on Earth is, well, a magnet like that is paramagnetic. That's kind of what what we know, what everybody knows magnets to be. They're paramagnetic, which means it's got an attraction to the core. Right. Like if this is Earth, here we are standing on Earth, then we're always drawn towards the center. That's kind of like gravitational pull, almost? Yeah, like gravity. Gravity is paramagnetic. Okay. Here. Okay. So... This stuff is naturally diamagnetic, which it doesn't attract to the core, it repels from the core. Wow. So, I remember first finding this stuff at like a show buying for the shop, and I just could not put it down. It was too interesting, it was too colorful, but it just kept capturing my attention and my energy I just couldn't put it away but uh, the fact that it's diamagnetic I found was really interesting for me because uh, it helps me you know it's like a defense mechanism naturally so a lot of people are always drawing everything in they're working on their manifesting and their attraction stuff right but for me it was always a challenge to you know to repel and to keep, you know, the things away from me that I didn't want to be attracting, so. Excellent point. I think okay. that's what this stuff is really helpful for. Okay. We always hear about bismuth and how it links to potential time travel or time man manipulation or... Can you give us any insight on that? Time travel.
Okay, so you have a cube basically, right? And then a point in the center, and what you end up with is inverted pyramids. So that this is all your open space, right? It's like taking a pyramid, like the Pyramid of Giza, and flipping it upside down. Okay. But then you have that pyramid here, and this one on here, and then the pyramid here, and here. But you don't have the pyramid coming out. You have them all going towards the center. So, I mean, what you're going to end up with is something like this. And, I mean, for time travel, if you want to go somewhere, right? Yeah. It's got to go into the center. It's going into the center from that side. And we'll do it on this. It's going into the center from here. It's going in from here. It's going in from here. It's going in from here. There's two more. It's going in from here. And then it's going in from here. So everything is all about being drawn to the center. Right. But this stuff repels from the center. So when you're drawing Ooh. everything to the center at the same time as you're repelling it, like you're basically just gonna you're gonna get to that point where it's right when things go through a massive transition. So, I mean, if you bring everything to your center and then you are repelling it all at the same time, uh, you're going to break through something. So, maybe it's time. Excellent. Lovely. So, how do you use it? Uh, I'll take two pieces. Right? Yeah. And then I'll have one up here at Crown. And then one here at Solar Plexus. Right. And then I'll just go back and forth like that. And I use Solar Plexus and Crown. Because I think Bismuth, that's Sharpie. Here we go. Uh, the Bismuth kind of primarily works down here okay so like stomach and self sense of self and will and stuff uh, so I'll have one up here too at crown because those are principal links and you know if it were third eye then you go here with orange or throat you go with root but uh, crown and third is what I do so those two purple and yellow. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And is there anything specific that one uh, is looking to feel or experience? Um, hmm. I don't know. It's not like Moldavite where almost anyone can feel that. Yeah. Uh, you put that in someone's hand and they're like, whoa. Whoa. Um, I'm not sure. I, I haven't really noticed in my experience like a common reaction to this stuff in terms of feeling other than it's just a visual thing and it's something that people feel like they can't ever put down. So that's that's one of the things I noticed that's common. Okay. Last question. Yeah. The number one question we have about bismuth is um, is it natural or is it formed? What... How does this process work? How do we get this? Okay. Yeah, that's easy. I mean, uh, um, elemental bismuth, like when you find it in the earth, yep. will look like this. Okay. Yeah. And a couple of things lead to it looking like this. And this is a tough question because if you don't do anything to it, it's going to stay like this. Right. But how does... The question is, how does this end up like this? Yeah, well, that's the question. Okay. Um, a couple of reasons. One is melting point. And the bismuth melting point is really, really low. So, um, that in combination with the fact that as a liquid, it's denser than as a solid... And there's only a couple other things that are like that. Well, one is water. Okay. Um, so water, bismuth, there's a couple more. And then uh, the third is the, again, back to this, diamagnetic. Right. And it's crystal habit. Um, anything that's diamagnetic, because it, it doesn't attract 
to the core, it repels from the core. Right. Right? So basically what you have is it's not growing a crystal from the inside out. It's growing it from the outside in. Well, okay. And then this is all you have to do to get this from this is melt it. So we're going to melt the, the liquid type bismuth thing and it and the cooling process, right? Yeah, as as it's cooling, it crystallizes okay. like this. And because it's diamagnetic and its crystal habit is a hoppering technique, then it basically from the outside in will just cool down like this. Wow. And the color is oxidation simply. Okay. So the answer would be, uh, is this stuff real? Yep. All right, we're just going to leave it at that because I think we got enough info to make my head spin for, you know, a couple days. How are you doing? I'm just getting warmed up. That's what I like to see. Scramble. Excellent. Well, thank you for that scrambling, and we're going to be looking forward to the next one. And um, thanks for inviting us into the Tinker Shop to shoot this installment of the Ore Shop Weekly Gem and we'll stay tuned. Beauty. Anytime.